Lu Shang is the most unassuming hyper carry that you can add to any team comp you can think of. Let me show you why. His S1 or first skill doesn't really have anything going on. There's a silence and a little bit of damage, but you're not building attack on this Esper. Just trust me, I'll explain why in a minute. His S3 also is kind of weak, and until you get at level 6, it's not really doing much. Once you get him ascended, it'll give you safeguarded, which will consume stacks to make it so you can never be minorly debuffed, which is really, really nice, but it's not where Lu Shang's power is the power all lies in his passive yes you do have to scroll for this description and there is a lot to chew on basically it gives all your allies at the very start of the round a buff that they want that each time they take an action it increases up to a cap and it's really ambiguous and annoying that it never actually says it but i may have found the value pay attention to the fighters not only getting more attack but also increasing the damage dealt pay attention to the defenders getting more defense and gaining damage resistance. Pay attention to the controllers not being able to miss or have resisted the effects that they're trying to inflict. What? Not only that, but also the speed. And if you look, it also has minus one cooldown for the supports, which means if you run something like Ocean on, say, Leanne, you can rotate her ultimate like crazy. Really, let's break it down. It's a five cooldown base. After you get this S3 leveled up, it's a four cooldown, minus one for Lu Shang, and since you have two turns with the bubble up, if you get lucky and have Ocean on both, you'll have your ultimate ready the moment it's your turn on the third time when you no longer have that bubble. Let's roll back to the fighter side of Accentuated and his passive. Notice that it also gives you attack and damage dealt increased. That means you are essentially doing exponential damage every time your fighter gets a turn. The same thing applies to your defenders. They're getting defense, which negates some of the damage they take, and getting damage resistance, which negates some of the damage they take. It is important to me that you understand how strong this really is, considering some of the longer boss fights and how Dislight seems to be kind of releasing more, I guess, bruisery kind of espers with Meta Nezha and Elif and Fatima, how they kind of get stronger as they go on, this will make them exponential, and that is insane. Obviously, Elif doesn't get stronger as time goes on, but she is really bruisery and standoffy, and Amir does actually benefit from Lu Shang, despite it giving him attack, because he does, like I said, increase the damage dealt as well, up to 100% bonus damage, which Amir is really, really good at abusing. Lu Shang never looks like he's doing very much, but check out Cronus's health bar after the Valeri hits him, and after Ollie hits him. That is absurd. And my Ollie and Valeria builds aren't anything insane. I wouldn't say they're necessarily bad, but here, just look at them. My Ollie has absolutely zero attack, and he's a perfect example of what I'm telling you. Lu Shang's Accentuated makes it so even your fighters that don't scale off of attack can absolutely roll you know, like Ollie just did. I don't think he's going to be very good for PvP, maybe the three turn silence, and obviously accentuated is absolutely insane, but because of the turn limits enforced in PvP, I just don't see him really taking off. I could definitely be wrong here though. For your main equipment set, I suggest either running Wind or Harmony. A lot of people are running Ocean for the ultimate, which I kind of understand and you can probably do too, but I think Harmony and Wind get a lot more value, especially if you're trying to do PvP, in which case you're going to want speed as your focus. The last bit of his passive gives him 50% more of his defense and 25% damage reduction, meaning when you're going for a build, you're going to want to stack HP and a little bit of defense. Speed is always helpful and definitely get a little accuracy in there. If you have to run recurve, secondary accuracy is the only way your silence is going to For secondary sets, HP bonus on Grove is very good. Recurve is amazing if you have to, and Avatar is funny. It's not very good, but I personally enjoy it because silencing someone that just hits you, pretty funny, especially with is Divinate giving you back cooldowns on a chance after getting hit. His second Rezo basically makes it so your ultimate is no longer necessary if all you're using it for is safeguard and speed is kind of whatever now. And his R6 makes it so if he dies, since you lose all your accentuated stacks, it doesn't matter so much because everybody gets a turn. Here is my current in progress build for my Lu Shang, and to answer the question, should you pull Lu Shang? Absolutely, what are you waiting for? He is absolutely disgustingly good.